Thank you all for your warm words of welcome. Before adding my own welcome on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I want to acknowledge the students, faculty, staff, and trustees who served on the Presidential Search Committee, <clears throat> many of whom are on stage today. This group was critically involved, along with the Board, in getting us to this wonderful occasion, having collectively dedicated literally thousands of hours to ensuring that Williams College found the very best person to serve as our 18th president. We were fortunate to be doing our work on the strongest possible platform, as the college has never been in a better position than it is today. We heard repeatedly in our discussions with academic leaders across the country that the quality of our faculty and students, the soundness of our operations, the strength of our financial position, and fundamental to each of these, the passionate commitment of our alumni are broadly recognized and widely admired throughout higher education. It's well understood that sustained institutional excellence requires great leadership. In my lifetime, Williams has had the benefit of a remarkable group of people who have filled the role of president, a group to which we are adding another extraordinary member today. Jack Sawyer, whose term arrived <clears throat> whose term ended just as I arrived on campus in 1973, guided Williams through the almost infinite nuances of exiting the fraternity system and entering the era of coeducation. John Chandler, who led the college during my own time as a student and beyond, brought a distinctive talent for translating ambitious ideas and intentions into fully articulated programs and shepherded the then radical changes to seamless fruition. Frank Oakley, whose 40 years on the Williams faculty included eight years as president, moved Williams to significantly increase our racial diversity and fundamentally ingrained our commitment to supporting faculty excellence in both teaching and research. Hank Payne, who was an early advocate of the kind of collaboration with our local community that has led to important investments by the college in and around Berkshire County and to programs that now attract half our student body to service each year. Carl Vogt, who stepped up from the board to lead the college in a particularly challenging moment, won people over with his Texan warmth and demonstrated an enormous talent for navigating in choppy water. Morty Shapiro, who also came out of the faculty ranks and who spearheaded the development of exciting new programs in times of plenty and responded with equal vigor and creativity when changed economic circumstances required. Bill Wagner, who led us through a pre presidential transition during the financial crisis, overseeing a disciplined process that kept Williams in good health and moving forward. Adam Falk, who led the evolution of both our management practices and our physical structures into the modern era, including both the most significant rebuilding of the college facilities in our history and the largest capital campaign in the history of the liberal arts to make sure we could pay for them. And most recently, Tiku Majumder, who set aside his storied teaching and research career to keep us moving through that campaign and those essential building projects as we took the time necessary to find our newest president. As we're fortunate to have five of these former leaders with us today, I'd like you to join me in thanking them for the care, commitment, and effectiveness with which they stewarded our school. It has been a great privilege for me to have known eight of the last nine leaders of our college and to have worked closely with four of them. It was also a true privilege to have participated with my colleagues in the search that led us to today. And it is a particular honor for me to add my welcome to Maud Mandel as our 18th president with complete conviction that she will be an exemplary addition to this remarkable group. The excellence of our college, created by generations of faculty, staff, students, and alumni, 
and fostered and sustained by great leadership over many years, allowed us to attract extraordinary candidates to our search and to realize the aspirations expressed by the many hundreds of people in our community who helped us to describe the person we sought as our next president. We sought and we found in Maud Mandel a vigorous and accomplished leader with a record of lively, distinguished, and creative scholarly achievement and a demonstrated appreciation for the values and the culture of academic life. In the poetic language of two members of our English faculty who helped create the prospectus for our search, we sought as well, and we found, a person whose classroom engagement revealed the soul of a teacher and who enjoys and has thrived among intelligent, vibrant undergraduates. On this note, Maud made many astute observations during the hours and hours of interviews to which she graciously acceded, but one resonates particularly for me at this moment in the cycle of campus life across the country, and that is her observation that student activism is to be embraced and encouraged as the much preferred alternative to a lack of student interest. One of the many refreshing times when she pointed without hesitation to the half full portion of the glass. Indeed, the pure joy with which she spoke of her student engagements throughout our discussions made a lasting impression on all of us, perhaps best captured by the image of Maud set up at a picnic table at the heart of the Brown campus, inviting students to come share cookies with the Dean on the Green. With Maud Mandel as both a member and the leader of our community, I believe that Williams College will continue to attract an excellent and ever more engaged and diverse faculty, staff, and student body, all of whom will have every opportunity to enjoy success. She has a profound commitment to diversity in its fullest definition and a well-developed and well-exercised set of skills for ensuring that diversity in hiring and admissions leads to deep and true inclusion. She brings as well an instinct for working in close collaboration with faculty and students, a thoughtful listener who thrives on discussion, with a reputation for balancing personal confidence with a genuine respect for different points of view. At the same time, she has a demonstrated willingness to make change even when it might not be immediately embraced by all. An essential appreciation that consensus building should precede change when possible, but also the wisdom and the courage to know when consensus might necessarily have to follow. We all believe that Williams has an obligation to exercise leadership beyond our own campus in ensuring the continued vitality of the liberal arts, evolving ourselves as future needs and opportunities unfold, serving as a model for others, and articulating on the national and international stage those values that we hold most deeply. Maud's dedication, and indeed even her vocabulary in this regard, is exceptional. Many of you have had the opportunity to hear Maud speak to the question of the role and the value of the liberal arts. If you haven't, you will be proud of being a part of this essential tradition and renewed in your conviction when you do. Maud brings to us the skills, the values, and the passion to preserve what is excellent about Williams College and also to help us aspire to embrace new opportunities in the continual process of renewal and growth. She is committed to engaging the entire community in this process, and she is already making her warmth, her ready smile, and her infectious energy felt widely on the campus and throughout the greater Williams community. It is therefore with great confidence, affection, and enthusiasm that I ask you to join me and the speakers before me in welcoming Maud Mandel to Chapin Hall on this September day to be inducted as the 18th president of Williams College.